Hello my lovely butterfly, it's France. Welcome back for Journal of Monday 208 and today it's all about lightness. These are all the products that I will be using today. Of course they're all listed in the description of this video and the video is cut up into chapters for you to jump to the next one if you're journaling together with me. Now, if I'm thinking about lightness, I like to have bubbles on my spread, being it in the shape of these kind of circles or really like a bubbly kind of stencil. So I'm placing my masks randomly on the paper, not overthinking it, just pushing them on there. And these have a little opening so that they stay in place once you've put them there. That's if you keep the paper flat, of course so that you can still flip through your journal and they won't go anywhere. Let's protect the journal because we're going to be working with some color and unless you want to colorize your entire journal at once, you might want to add some protection. We're going in with a stencil and with a spray ink and we're going to start on one side of the journal, just spraying on some of that color straight over the stencil and then blending it with some water. When you're doing this, it might be daunting to start spraying like that. Just take a deep breath and just go for it. And then lifting the stencil, we're going to press the rest of the color on the other side. We're going to more or less heat set this before moving anything, just to make sure that the color stays in place. When you're doing this, just make sure that you don't melt your masks or stencils because, well, they will be unusable after that. And when it's dry enough, you can lift up the masks. As we still have some of that yummy color on the stencil, we might as well use it and just press it down where you still have some white on the paper. And once everything is dry, we can move on to the next layer. And that is going to be, in my case, Neo Colors too. So those are water soluble crayons. So you can use whatever water soluble crayons or pencils it is you have for this. I opted for a contrasting color, so I went in with green, but I did keep all the colors pretty light. I'm using my circle stencil, which matches the masks that I've used before, just to trace the circle. I could have done it without the stencil, but I'm a bit lazy, so I make it easier on myself where I can just very quickly tracing all the circles and then trying to have a variety in that color. So one circle will be green and one will be pink.
And once you're done tracing everything, you can start blending. Now we're gonna end up with a lot of white in these circles and that's the point. This is about lightness, so we're not trying to cover everything up just yet. We might get there at some point, but not just yet. So just using some water to pull the color into that circle. Be careful where you have two circles touching so that you don't bring the colors to one another because they will blend, they will mix up. And if like me, you're working with a warm and cold color that are secondary or tertiary colors, you will end up with mud. And I don't want that. I want my colors to remain clear and pure. So I'm keeping my circles separated. We can intensify the color just a tiny bit if we want to, and that is what I am doing here. I wanted to add a little bit of shading at the bottom, so I went in with a slightly darker color. If you don't have a darker color, just go back in with that same color that you used for tracing the circle and just intensify the color a little bit. Just try to keep it in one side of the circle so that you don't cover everything up with that intense color. Next up, we're going to add a little bit of drama on the edges of the spread. And to do that, we're using darker paints and a stencil, and we're just going to dab the paint over the stencil. Now, as I'm working with a stencil that has very, very fine openings, I really have to work the sponge on there to make sure that the color gets all the way down onto the paper. And I'm using two fresco finish paints here because first of all, I love the matte finish that they have and the fact that they dry so fast. But of course these colors, well, they're yummy colors. I wouldn't be applying them in my journal if I didn't think they're yummy colors. That lightest of the two paints, however, is London Night, which Paper Artsy has discontinued. And I wanted to have a shout out here. If like me, you think that Paper Artsy should bring back that color, shout it out in the comment. Let's show Paper Artsy that we really need that London night back in their range. Let's convince them together. Shout it out in the comments. And if like me, you like to balance things out, you might want to repeat that just a little bit on the other side as well. Not too much, just really staying close to the edge.
then as I still have some of that paint, I can as well use it to add splatters. So if you have some paint left over, just add some water to it, pick it up with a paintbrush and then splatter it on, on your spread. Again, this might seem daunting, like, ooh, I'm gonna have splatters where I don't want to have them. Just do it, just let go and flicker that paintbrush over the paper and you'll see it's extremely liberating. <laughs> I decided on my Paper Artsy FP008 stamp set because I have a series of numbers on there that I really want to add on this spread. So you can use whatever kind of stamp it is you like to use. For me, that's numbers. Go for what you like to use. But we're going to reuse those water-soluble crayons that we use to colorize a circle to stamp with. So we're going to scrape those over the stamp and then spray a little bit of water to activate them and that is what we're going to stamp with. When you're doing this just make sure that you don't spray the water on your crayons on your table because well they will just melt laying there. For my focal point, I decided to go with my FP009. And now, if you don't have this particular stamp set, just pick a stamp that has nice big openings to the design so that we can use those later on. And we're just going to stamp that with archival ink directly on the spread. And while I'm at it, I might as well use that funky little circle that I designed with the stamp set to amp it up a little bit.
For the wording, we're going to do the exact same thing, picking a little word that fits into uh, the opening of our focal point and just stamp it directly on there. And if you think that I never stamp wonky, think again, because this is wonky, but I don't care. Once it's completely finished, you won't even notice it anymore. And then I decided last minute to add the little heart of my FP009 stamp set at the bottom of um, the flower leaves and then to bind those with just a little doodling, eeny meeny tiny line binding them to one another or attaching them to one another. I think that that's better English, right? <laughs> Now that focal point is drowning a little bit because there's a lot going on. And as this is about lightness, we're going to push all of that back into the background. But we're not going to just cover it up because, well, it is about lightness. So we're going to push it back in a light way. And to do that, we're just going to brayer on light colors. I opted for a very soft pink and white.
And now it's time to make that focal point sing. It's not because it's about lightness that we're not allowed to use some black. And we're going to give that flower some intensity, but also a gradient in that intensity. To do that, I'm using a water-soluble charcoal pencil. If you don't have that, you can use a water-soluble black pencil, regular pencil. Um, just apply the color on one side of the opening of your focal point image and then using water, pull it to the other side. We can also use that same pencil to frame the spread just a tiny bit because everything is so light by adding a little bit of scribbling on the edge and then again blending it with water. I don't know about you, but I like a little bit of drama on the spread. So I'm going in with black splatters. I'm doing this with a black Posca pen, but you can do this with just regular black paint, adding some water to it and then flicking it on with a paintbrush. I did want to add a little bit of white details to the word, but as Posca pens are gouache paint, they're actually picking up the charcoal water soluble pencil that is underneath. So that was not the best idea, but hey, I tried. And that's it. We just finished the spread. I hope you journaled together with me. If you did, tag me on social media, show me your making, and let's share some love everywhere. Thank you so much for joining me again today. If you're one of my patrons, you rock. I'll see you back here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses. <laughs>